Hi, I'm Mike Brodie from ChemStore, and I'm here to talk to you today about our brand new state-of-the-art lithium-ion battery storage facility we've just installed. Lithium-ion batteries have the ability to go into thermal runaway. This can be caused by three events, mechanical damage, overcharging, or a default in the battery during the manufacturing process. ChemStore have designed the 5 volt storage module as a facility to store new batteries before they go into production, and also to create a location for quarantined batteries that be suspected of damage or have been rejected for quality purposes. So let's have a closer look inside the 5 volt and I can run you through some of the features. So here's the temperature control system. This is a duct running across the top of the store and circulates warm air throughout both the quarantine areas and the storage areas to maintain a constant temperature of 19 degrees plus or minus two. Here we have the heat detection system. Above every pallet location, we have a heat detector. The one at the front here is protected by a guard to protect it from damage during loading. And these detectors give us an early indication of the battery boxes possibly raising in temperature and, and becoming more dangerous. So we have a number of gas detectors built into the store at different heights, depending on the types of gases they're designed to detect. We have three at low level, one in the middle under the storage shelf, and one right at the top of the store to detect gases that are lighter than air. The store also incorporates a traffic light warning system. This one here can be seen from the yard so that approaching lorries and fork trucks know if the area is safe to approach. The green traffic light means the store is safe to use. A user can approach and use the store under normal conditions. Everything's safe and good to go. The amber warning flashing beacon is a call to action. It means the store needs attention in order to operate safely. This might be for a number of reasons. Inside the store, there's a lone worker operator button, which can be pushed if an operator needs attention or help. The heat detection system, the gas detection system, and a general fault scenario can also activate the amber flashing light. Also, when loading the stores, once the doors are open, the amber light will also activate to show that the heating system has been turned off during the loading process. The 5 volt also incorporates a low O2 detector. This is shown by the blue solid light on the warning sign behind us. So I'm now still at the back of the 5 volt where we have the main control room. The traffic light system is repeated here for personnel accessing through the main control room door. So although the control room is for authorised personnel only, I'll give you a quick look around so I can show you some of the features, starting with the light switch. First we have the main control panel. This should be your first point of reference when entering the store. Under normal operations, you should see the four green lamps on. The power indicator lamp, the system normal indicator lamp, and the two supply, run and airflow green indicator lamps. This means everything is working fine and you should have nothing to do. I'll run through the board briefly. The first two red indicators at the top are the fire stage one and fire stage two indicator lamps. If these are on, it means the store has detected a fire event and you should leave the building and notify the authorized personnel. Our next red indicator lamp is our lone worker alarm. This indicates if an operator is in trouble, needs attention, they can hit the lone worker push button for assistance. As you can see, this illuminates the lamp and also the call to action, traffic light signal and amber lamp on the panel. To release the lone worker alarm, twist and pull. As covered outside previously, we have a low oxygen alarm detector. This will illuminate on the panel as well as the blue indicators outside on the warning sign. The following signal, storeroom temperature alarm, shows when the temperature inside the store is out of range at the desired set point. This is a replica of the amber lamp that's outside on both warning signs. The amber call to action is, is the store asking for attention to come and, come and assist. When we open any of the main storeroom doors, a door indicator lamp activates. That's this lamp right here. When the doors are open, and the door indicator open indicator is on, the AHU system and circulatory fans will turn off to prevent heat loss. So these four lamps and rotary switch all relate to the circulatory fan behind us. This is the electrical trip, which will illuminate if there's a problem with the fan. This is the temperature thermistor overload alarm and reset button. These two lights indicate that there's power to the fan and also that the airflow 
is correct and present. The rotary switch enables you to turn the system from automatic, which it should be in, in, in its normal condition, to off or to manual operation. It should be left in the auto position under normal operations. So if any of the alarms are sounding and you're undergoing a maintenance operation, you can mute the signals inside the control room simply by pushing and holding the alarm mute button. This won't kill the alarm itself, but will just mute the sirens. As part of a regular inspection test, you can illuminate all the lamps, both inside the store and outside, and activate the sirens, both inside and outside the storeroom, just to test that everything is working correctly, like this. It's also worth looking at the Delta control panel right here. The temperature of the store can be checked at this figure right here, and the alarms can be checked by pushing this button in the bottom corner. This will give an alarm log for recent events. Although in day-to-day -day operation there should be no need to interface with this controller, the alarm status can be seen across the top with the normal light indicated as expected and no other alarms of note. Set points and the AHU can be controlled with this menu. Here we can see the heater battery running at 100% to increase the temperature, and we can see the circulatory fan is on. This is the supply air temperature to the 5 volt. The 5 volt currently is warming up and is currently at 13 degrees. The internal control temperature can be adjusted on this menu by simply tapping the menu buttons here. To save, simply exit. The status menu can be used to get an overall picture of the whole system. Here we have all the alarms in normal condition, the volt temperature, set point temperature, and other key indicators. So a map of the heat detectors that we use above each pallet location can be viewed within the store menu. This shows you a layout of each of the heat detectors and their current status. In the event of a heat detector firing, one of these indicators will flash red and there'll be a call to action to investigate. This can all be seen from the control room without ever having to open the storeroom doors. You can return to the main menu here. So this is our main fire alarm panel and here's how it works. One of these red pipes draws sampled air from the storerooms and the VESDA unit itself looks for small particulate in the air to detect the presence of a fire or smoke. This is the VESDA unit in its normal state, no alarms. This is the fire alarm panel in its normal state, just with power on. You should have no other lights on, on these panels. This is our gas detection system. It's constantly monitoring 10 different sensors throughout the storage areas for gases that are released during a thermal runaway event. If the warning light is active, there'll be a call to action indicated on the main control panel and the amber lights on the warning signs outside. If this is present, then there's been a gas release detected and you should seek assistance immediately.